everybody and welcome. Today I'll be reading the first chapter from the book Sweeter and Honey by my father, Mr. K.B. Verghese. He had ordered, ordered three books actually. One was a compilation of uh, Malayalam hymns and verses that could be read in houses uh, where comfort was needed. And the second uh, was uh, a Bible quiz book. And this was his third book. This is a compilation of all the essays he published in various Christian magazines is based basically uh, based on the Bible. So this book was titled Sweeter Than Honey and uh, uh, Sweeter Than Honey in Malayalam is Tenilum Madram. Tenilum Madram. Okay. And so I'll read the first chapter. Uh, and I'm reading this chapter because I want to celebrate his life, uh, or the memory of him this month. His birthday he falls on uh, September 19th and he passed away on September 23rd uh, so whenever I remember him uh, I remember him with uh, respect and lots of love uh, and uh, so this uh, reading of, from his book is actually uh, a good memory of the life he led and uh, I wish to finish this book chapter by chapter, slowly for posterity's sake. So here we go, the first chapter, Sweeter Than Honey. There is a song in Malayalam, beginning, Tenilu Madram, Vedam Allade Endundu Chul Tora. Meaning, is there anything other than the scripture which is sweeter than honey, my friend? Yes, there is nothing sweeter than the word of God to a believer. Honey, as we all know, is a sweet and sticky fluid made by bees from the nectar of different flowers, both domestic and wild. The process of manufacturing honey is really a mystery. It is a miracle of God in nature. In the Bible, Palestine is often referred to as the land flowing with milk and honey. Bees are still abundant even in the remote parts of the wilderness where they deposit honey in the crevices of the rock or in the hollow of trees. The Old Testament refers to honey quite often. Honey was not to be used in sacrifices, but the first fruits of honey were to be presented to the Lord for the use of his priests. Honey was considered precious enough to be gifted to kings. King Solomon said, My son, eat honey, for it is good and the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Proverbs 24 verse 30. Thus the Bible talks much about the sweetness of honey and how desirable it is. But the word of God is sweeter than this honey. Let me quote the psalmist. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Now this we read in Psalm 19 verses 9 and 10. Also, how sweet are thy words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalm 119, 103. Ezekiel the prophet said that when he ate the scrolls containing God's words, it was in his mouth as sweet as honey. No doubt, honey is sweet to the mouth and soothes the throat. It is used as a medicine in various ailments. But the word of God is sweeter because it is not only sweetness to the mouth, but to the mind and to the soul. There is a song in Malayalam, Praising the word of God, it begins sweet, sweet, and sweetest is the scriptures. The song goes on to describe it as it is worthier and more valuable than gold and silver. It is light which lightens the path, even in the deepest darkness, and it is the best weapon to fight the enemy, the devil. Even if you are dead from the bite of the deadly serpent, Satan, the word of God can raise you up with eternal life. Even if you are wandering through the wilderness without knowing which way to go, the word of God would show you the right path and guide you to your destination. Further, the word of God is manna to the spiritually hungry and living water to the thirsty. It gives comfort to those who labor 
and are heavy laden. The word of God is wonderful and is definitely sweeter than honey. Now let us see why the word of God is sweeter than honey to the believer. First of all, the word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1 verse 14. The word reveals God through his son Jesus Christ, our Savior, and teaches us how to live a Christian life. Our desires and efforts should be directed towards knowing Jesus Christ personally. Every book in the Old Testament reveals Jesus Christ and every book in the New Testament reveals his life, redemptive work and his saving grace. Paul was willing to offer everything of human value to appreciate the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. He said, but indeed, I also count all things lost. For the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Philippians 3, 8 When we set aside everything of human value and get to know the Lord by ourselves, in earnest longing, God will reveal Jesus Christ to us through the scriptures. God has revealed the fullness of his person in his Son by and through the word of God. It is for us to set aside things of temporal value in order to obtain the knowledge of eternal value. Knowing Christ is sweeter than honey. Secondly, the word of God is free for all. The universal freedom of God's word to accomplish his will is a constant blessing. The word of God is limitless and has no barriers. It influences the life and activity of every person, family, society and nation. God's word is free and cannot be controlled and restricted. For years they have tried to destroy it. Chain it, prove it wrong. But the more they try to destroy it, the more it spreads throughout the world. The word of God is alive and active. It is sharper than the two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God will not lose its power or be rendered lifeless. Let us accept this truth so that its life-giving power may change our lives. God is waiting for us to receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save, sanctify and redeem us. The word of God is free, living, active, powerful and hence sweeter than honey. Thirdly, the word is sweeter than honey because it is part of the armor of God. It is the sword of the spirit with which we can stand against the wile of the evil devil. It was by using this weapon that Jesus Christ defeated Satan in the wilderness and started his public ministry. Unless we defeat Satan, we cannot be partners in gospel ministry. It is the principal weapon and against the hostility of humanists, the anger of atheists, apathy of authority, disapproval of doubters, and the arguments of the worldly wise. The word of God endures forever. 1 Peter 1 25. The victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the devil was complete and final when he rose from the dead. He secured this victory and shared it with us, the family of believers. The fruits of victory have been fully distributed and we have been set free from the fear of death. Satan now is a defeated enemy and he has no power over us. So let us gird ourselves with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, which alone has the power to defeat our enemy, Satan and his wiles. Yes, the Word of God is indeed sweeter than honey. The Word of God heals and comforts that evening they besought to him many who were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed who were sick matthew 5 
eight sixteen. Jesus, during his sojourn on earth, healed all who came to him with diseases and infirmities, cast out evil spirits from those who were possessed, cleansed the lepers, opened the eyes of the blind and ears of the deaf, and even raised the dead by his word. The word of God is very powerful. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and heart, and health to the body. Proverbs sixteen twenty four. Word of God not only heals our physical ailments, but heals our mind and soul. It comforts us. If your mind is troubled, if you are passing through difficult situations in your life, if you are sick, if you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, just open the scriptures, and you will find words of comfort. In all situations, and you will get a peace that passes all understanding, which the world cannot give. That is the power of the word of God. It is by the word that Jesus still the stormy sea. His words comforted Mary and Martha in their sorrow at the death of their brother Lazarus. It's through the word that he defeated Satan and all those who raised against him. This Jesus is still alive and is with us and continues to comfort and strengthen us through the word. Yes, the word is indeed sweeter than honey. Finally, the most important thing is the word burns our heart. Did not our hearts burn within us when he talked to us on the road while he opened to us the scriptures? Luke 24:32 said the disciple who encountered the risen Christ on their way to Emmaus from Jerusalem. This burning of the heart is the realization of Christ's sacrificial death and life-giving resurrection unless our hearts stir and burn while reading the word of God, we are not fully realizing the essence of it. The Holy Spirit will come upon us through the word of God and we will grow in Christ. The Holy Spirit fell on those who heard the word. Acts 10, 44. And the indwelling of the word in us will lead us to our eternal home. The ultimate goal of God for his children is to be more like his son Jesus Christ, which is also the primary purpose of God in saving us through his son Jesus Christ. Let this be the ultimate aim of all of us and let the word of God guide us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. How sweet are thy words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalm 119 verse 103. This article, Sweeter Than Honey, by my father, K.V. Verges, was published first, is copyrighted, Almaya Sandesham, in August 2012. Sweeter Than Honey by Mr. K.V. Vergis, my father. I pray that many will be encouraged by this reading of this short essay on Sweeter Than Honey exposition by my father or student titled Sweeter Than Honey. May God bless you all. Have a blessed, blessed time. Listening. Enjoy. May it enrich you. God bless.